In this video, we're going to talk about measures of dispersion. So let's start by looking at two students, and I just named them A and B, and their test um, grades for the four tests that they have taken. So you can see um, student A had 75, 82, 84, and 81. Student B had 59, 98, 68, 97. Right. So what we're going to start with is finding the mean for each of the students just to say, hey, what's their test average? How are they doing this semester? Um, so we remember that the mean is just add up the scores. So I'm going to add 75, 82, 84, and 81 divide by 4. Then I'm going to add 59, 98, 68, 97 and divide by 4. Um, what's interesting is they both come out the same, which is 80.5. Um, and it's not that coincidental. I really did do it on purpose. But what I wanted to show you is that the average doesn't always show you everything there is to look at. Um, if you look at student A, they're pretty consistent. They had a C, a B, a B, a B. So there are three Bs and one C, so it makes sense that their average is a B. Um, when I look at student B, I started with a 59, which is an F, then up to a 98, which is a really great high A, a 68, which is a pretty high D, and then a 97, another great A. So this student's kind of all over the place, right? So some A's, some F's and D's, um, and it averaged out to 80.5, but it shows the student had a lot of potential, but maybe didn't study all the time, right? But they ended up with the same average. So when we're looking at this, when we're saying things could have the same average, but not necessarily reflect the same kind of data, we want to talk about dispersion. So one measure of how data points are dispersed is called the range. The range is simply the highest minus the lowest data point. So let's go back to these two students, A and B, and say, well, what was the range? How far away was their highest um, test grade from their lowest? So for student A, the highest was an 84, the lowest was a 75, so that's a difference of only nine points. So it's a pretty tight set of grades. Um, where student B, the highest was a 98, but the lowest was a 59, and that's a difference of 38. So there's a really big dispersion there. So that's one way to compare students, um, besides just the average, to also look at the range. Um, so I did the same thing with hotel prices. You can see this I did back um, 2016, but it doesn't matter. You could, you could go look it up today, and it's the prices might have actually gone a little higher. So what this is is um, prices for hotel rooms at the Seminole Hard Rock in Tampa. And I just took a particular um, month, and so this was May 25th through June 30th, to show you the prices. And um, you can see it's pretty pretty dispersed um, here. So let's see if we can figure out what the range is. Um, so first I thought, well, just to see what's the average price, because generally if you stay at a hotel, it'll tell you, here's your average nightly price. Um, it says it's um, 476.027. So that says I took all of the prices shown on this page, and I added them all together, and then I divided by how many numbers there were, how many days that I had shown you, and that was the 476. The median, which says what's the middle price, was 379, but the average, the mode, was 299. So what a big difference between um, mean, median, and mode in this one, about $100 each time. Um, the range the highest price for the dates is $1,509, and the lowest was $279, which says that range, that difference, was $1,230. Um, really, a big range explains why the mean is the highest of the three averages we calculated. Having a big um, range says they're really dispersed, and so there is going to be a great difference in the mean, where the median will be the middle. Half the points will be higher, half the points will be lower, and mode, well, you never know what's going to happen with the mode. Um, the mid-range of the data set is the mean of the minimum and maximum values of the data set. So I have the minimum value, the maximum value, I divide by 2. So if we wanted to look at the mid-range, um, I would have the high, 1509, the low, 279, divided by 2, and I have 89, or 894. So just one more um, explanation of an average for this set of data points. Okay. Um, we have one more type of dispersion to talk about, and this is very normal for people to talk about. It's called standard deviation. It's a little difficult to calculate, so I'm going to break it up. So let me first show you 
um, what the calculation, what the equation is, and then we'll break it down and figure out how we're going to get it. So um, the name of this dispersion is standard deviation, and so use an S. And you can see it's the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. All right. So what this is saying is you're going to take whatever data point you have and you're going to subtract whatever the mean is. So that before we start this, we'll calculate the mean and then we'll subtract the mean from each data point. Whatever number we get, we're going to square it. And really the purpose of the squaring is to make the number positive because sometimes the mean might be higher than our data point and we don't want to deal with negative numbers. So we're squaring it to get rid of it. After we square all the numbers, we add them all up and we divide by n minus 1. After we divide by n minus 1, then we take the square root, kind of gets rid of the whole idea that we squared it. Um, so it will be a lot of steps. Don't worry, we're going to be okay. I'm going to show you how to do it in steps, and I'm also going to encourage you to figure out how to do this on your calculator. Most calculators have a button for standard deviation, so you would enter in all the data points, and then you would ask the calculator to do the statistic for you. I'm completely fine with that. Uh, most statisticians do that as well. Um, if I have to ever do standard deviation, I do it in Excel. I'm just never going to do this by hand, so I'm perfectly okay with using technology to get this. I would push you to use it on your calculator, though, because calculators you can bring to the final exam, and you cannot bring, like, you can't use Excel during the exam. You can use calculators. So learn how to do it on there. I've posted some videos, um, but you could also go look it up on YouTube or something to find a video for your calculator. All right, so let's set up a chart, and let's start talking about this. And I'm going to go back to my first example, which was that those students with the test scores, okay? So if you remember, um, we calculated they both had a mean of 80.5. So this is student A, and here's the test score of 75, 82, 84, and 81. And what you can see is I just took those numbers and I subtracted 80.5. So I did 75 minus 80.5, 82 minus 80.5, 84 minus 80.5, and 81 minus 80.5. And you can see I got negative 5.5, 1.5, 3.5, 0.5. All right. I added them up um, to explain to you why we're going to square them. So you can see if I add them up, I got zero. That's always going to happen. I'm always going to have some numbers greater than the mean. I'm going to have some greater or smaller than the mean. And when I add them all up, it's going to be zero, which is not helpful. So that is exactly why we square them. And we have that square in the equation to start. So this newest column, I just squared. Five point, negative 5.5 .5 gave me 30.25. 1.5 squared was 2.25. 3.5 squared, 12.25. 0.5 squared is 0.25. And this time when I add those up, I get 45. So getting rid of the negatives gets rid of the zero, and now I have a number I can talk about. All right, before we take the square root, we first need to divide by 4 minus 1. Don't worry about minus, why it's minus 1. Just go with it. That's the equation. That's what we're going to do. And we're just going to go, that's what it is. We're doing it. So I had four test grades. I subtract one that makes it 3. So 45 over 3 is 15. I take the square root of 15. It gives me 3.87. So this is my standard deviation. It tells me a value of about how much the um, test deviated right, meaning higher or lower than the average, which was 80.5. So it says 80.5 was the average that the student got, but most of the scores were the 3.87 higher, 3.87 lower than actually 80.5. All right, so let's look at student B. I remember student B had a big difference in scores. So I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm starting with um, my scores, and I'm again subtracting 80.5. So I have 59 minus 80.5 is negative 21.5. 98 minus 80.5 is 17.5. 68 minus 80.5 is negative 12.5. And 97 minus 80.5 is 16.5. Once again, if I were to add those values up, I would get 0, which is why I need to score them. Right. So this time, bigger numbers means bigger squares. So the negative 21.5, when I squared it, was 462.25. 17.5 squared was 306.25, negative 12.5 squared, 156.25, and lastly, 16.5 squared, 272.25. Right. I added all those numbers up, and it gave me 1,197. So just like the last one, I'm going to do 4 minus 1 is 3. 
I had 1197 divided by 3 was 399. Square root of 399 is 19.97. Okay. So student B had a much bigger standard deviation. <clears throat> this says the scores went higher and lower than the 80.5 by about 20. So there's a big difference between the standard deviations of the two sets. Okay, so this data shows us how spread out each of the student scores are. When the standard deviation is small, the data points are close. When the standard deviation is large, the data is farther apart. Okay, so let's say Samantha tracked her pulse rate every 10 minutes during her workout. The results are then chart below. We want to find the range of her heart rate, the mid-range of her heart rate, the mean of her heart rate, and the standard deviation of her heart rate. All right, so we're saying when she started time zero, her pulse rate was 65. 10 minutes into the workout, it's up to 95. 20 minutes, it's at 128. At 30 minutes, it's at 135. At 40 minutes, it's at 140. At 50 minutes, it's just um, 95. And at 60 minutes, it's back down to 75. So let's start with the range. All right, the range says what was the highest, which you can see is 140. What was the lowest? 65. So that says the range, um, so how much did the heart rate change during the workout? It changed by 75. That's kind of a lot. Um, the mid-range says take the highest, so once again the 140, and the lowest, still 65. But this time I'm adding it together and dividing by 2, and it says the mid-range was 102.5. Okay. The mean. So if we are only looking at every 10 minutes, we want to know the mean of the heart rate over the workout time, you would add up. So the 65, 95, 120, 135, 140, 95, and 75, and it says um, 733 because we took seven different um, time, at seven different times we took the pulse rate, so I have seven readings, so I have 733 over seven, gave me 104.7. And then the standard deviation says how much higher or lower did it go? So here I need to use um, the mean that I just found, 104.7. I'm going to subtract that from each of the pulse rates that I had. So you can see that's what I recorded in the second, or really the third column. So the first column is the time, the second column is the pulse rate, and the third is subtract the mean of 104.7. Okay. If you were to add it up, you would get zero, but we're not going to do that. We're going to square it. So you can see I have my pulse rate, subtract the mean, and square them. Add all of those up. So when I added them, I got 5,353.5. Um, it's always over n minus 1. So we said we had seven um, different times that we took the pulse rate. I subtract 1 is 6. I'm going to do 5,353.5. Divide by 6. Take the square root. I got 29.9. All right, so here's one for you to try. Um, this is the price of six SUVs. Um, they're given in this chart. I want you to find the mean and the standard deviation. Definitely, definitely stop the video. Um, make this chart for yourself. Find the mean. Then do the value of the car minus the mean. Square it. Add it together. Do six minus one is five. So divide by five. Take the square root. That will give you standard deviation. And then come back. All right, so let me start you off by saying let's find the mean. So for the mean, I added up all the values, um, and then I divided by 6. So it says the mean, the mean value of the cars is 48,808.33. Um, then after I know the mean, I can subtract it from the value of the cars. Um, so there's my next column. And I know that's not enough, so I'm going to square them. And it's going to give me some pretty big numbers. That's okay. After I square them, I can add them all together. And then I'm going to divide by 6 minus 1, which is 5, and take the square root. So this says my standard deviation is $7,090.59. Okay. And just one more reminder, because it's so important to me, try to find this on your calculator. Again, I did post some videos, but I posted definitely the TIE like 83, 84, because I think a lot of people have graphing calculators. Then I tried to post a scientific calculator I've seen a lot of my students have, but it's really hard for me to tell, especially since I don't see you guys, um, what, what calculators you all have. So I guess the best I could and posted a couple, 
And then said, anything else you can't find, please go on YouTube and try to figure out how to put this in. Because standard deviation is a lot of calculations. I have no problem with you just, again, putting in the calculator, figuring out what it is, is what we do with the standard deviation that's really more important. Don't think we're done with it yet. It's going to keep coming at us, but you do need to know how to